اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Here's process macro model 2. Now, previously we have done a model with one single continuous moderator. In this example, I'm going to look into what if you've got two different moderators that are moderating a relationship between x and y. In this example, I'm taking all these variables as continuous. So you've got one IV, one DV, two moderators, and I've got one IV as commitment, moderating one is role ambiguity, moderating two is role conflict, and my DV is organizational performance. Now this is the statistical diagram where these two terms are the interaction terms. Now how to run, how do we do this in SPSS? Just select this menu option and put in your variables, but in this case, our model number would change to two. So how to do this? Let's go back to SPSS. Analyze. Regression is process macro. My DV is OP. My IV is commitment. Role ambiguity as the first moderator. Role conflict as the second moderator. Model number two. Go to options. Well, with multiple moderators, this might not be very meaningful. I would suggest using the other packages by Jeremy Dawson or James Keskin. Yes, only continuous variables that define products. Low, medium and high level of the moderator. Just press continue and press OK. Now here are my results. Model 2, Y variable, X variable, the two moderators, the sample size and my outcome variable which is organizational performance. R square, 42% change in OP is being explained by these four exogenous variables. Interaction 1 is Commitment into role ambiguity, interaction 2, commitment into role conflict. Is the interaction significant? Well, yes, this is significant. So yes, we can say role ambiguity does moderate the relationship between commitment and performance. And look at this, RC and well, yes, at turn percent, we can say that this is significant or at or if we say that it is one tailed, yes, it is significant as well. Is there an R square change with the inclusion of interaction term? Yes. Well, yes, to a certain extent, if it's 10% level of significance and yes, overall for both variables, it is significant. Now moving on, these are the conditional effects at low level, at average level or at high level of the moderators. Now look at this RA at low level of RA and conflict, the effect is Significant? Yes, it is significant. At low level of role ambiguity, but at average level of role conflict, is the effect significant? Yes, it is significant, but it is increasing as well. Now, with negative or low level of role ambiguity and higher level of role conflict, it is much higher. So, with the change in role conflict, we can see that there is a significant change in the moderating or in the relationship between commitment and organizational performance. Now similarly, we can obviously look at the average level of role ambiguity, but with the changes in role conflict. And is their effect significant? Yes. As we saw here as well, that overall, the impact or inclusion of both moderating variable did change the relationship between commitment and performance. Now this is the data that you can use to draw charts. Let's have a look here. If we copy this, let's copy file new syntax and let's paste it here. Let's select all. Let's run it. Here it is. Well, it's not much of a chart or graph that can be obviously easily understood. Something that is difficult, this is RA and then within RA, it's just taking RC. So at low level of RC, what happens to the relationship between commitment and organizational performance for low level of RA, the average level of RA and low level of RA. 
So what I would suggest is I would suggest using the James Gaskin or Jeremy Dawson Excel sheet to draw your graphs separately for both the moderators. Now coming back to our output. So overall, yes, we can say that both variables do moderate the relationship between your commitment and organizational performance. So this is negative. Now with the negative sign here, it is positive. Now we can say that interaction two, that is role conflict here, interaction two, role conflict is positively moderating the relationship between commitment and performance. But this positive moderation is at 10% and it's a pretty weak rather. Look at this 0 0.05. Now this one here, interaction one, this is negative. Now this negative sign here means that higher the role ambiguity, the weaker is the relationship between commitment and organizational performance. So the sign here would mean the sign with the interaction here would mean that whether the moderation is negative or positive. Now RA and RC both have a negative impact on organizational performance. But when they moderate, the RA is negatively moderating, whereas RC is positively moderating at 10%. This is how you can interpret the results for dual moderation in his process macro. Now let's do another example. Let's go to analyze and let's change the variables a bit. Let's instead of commitment, let's add culture and let's press OK. So the same two variables, the same role ambiguity and role conflict as moderators. But in this case, what I've changed is I've changed my independent variable. So I'm interested in assessing whether role ambiguity and role conflict moderate the relationship between culture and organizational performance. Now I've got this output here in detail in my PowerPoint slide. So let's go back. So this is what you do again, only continuous variables, low average and high level of moderators. And this is your first part of the output. Now this is what we are interested in. Have a look here. Now model summary, 36% change in organizational performance is being explained by these exogenous variables. Your interaction one, is it significant? Yes. So we can say role ambiguity moderates the relationship between culture and organizational performance. What type of moderation it is? It is negative. So role ambiguity negatively moderates, that is weakens the relationship between organizational culture or rather collaborative culture and performance. What about role conflict? Well, role conflict does have a negative impact, but it is insignificant. And so is the moderation, which is insignificant as well. So role conflict does not moderate the relationship between culture and performance. And role ambiguity, as I mentioned earlier, negatively moderates the relationship. Now culture has a significant impact. Yes, role ambiguity and its interaction with culture, interaction one has a significant impact of, on OP. This shows that role ambiguity negatively moderates, that is weakens the relationship. Role conflict, insignificant. Now again, whether the interaction has a significant influence on the relationship, now with the inclusion of role ambiguity, yes, the relationship is significantly affected. Whereas with the inclusion of role conflict, it is insignificant. Overall, with the inclusion of both, well, overall, yes, it is significant. Now have a look at this conditional effects, as we explained earlier, at lower level of role ambiguity and at lower level of role conflict, the effect is significant. At lower level of role ambiguity and at average level of role conflict, the effect is increased and it is significant as well. Now it further increases with the lower level of role ambiguity, but at higher level of role conflict. So again, as we mentioned earlier, role conflict does not moderate the relationship. However, the changes are mainly primarily because of the role ambiguity, because this is obviously have a higher impact or the higher change in R square as well. Now, this is how you can interpret these conditional effects of focal predictor, which is your culture on the organizational performance at different levels of your moderators. 
both the moderators and this is the effect size of culture on performance and whether this effect size is significant well yes it is significant look at this here all of them are significant there is no zero in between if there is no zero in between the lower level confidence interval and upper level confidence interval then we can say that this effect here is significant this would mean that the impact of culture on performance is significant at these values of the moderator now this is how you draw the chart again this does not convey much of a meaning so i would recommend using the jeremy dawson excel sheet or the excel sheet by james gaskin i hope now you would have understood how to use multiple moderators in a relationship between one iv and dv thank you very much